Good afternoon, everybody. So, uh, winter happened. Don't know when it happened, but winter happened. Nah, it kind of like, it kind of started snowing at like, I don't know, 11 o'clock. And it just happened, it just didn't stop. Like, I was kind of warned about this, but, you know, can't believe everything you hear. I was... 50 50 on it actually snowing and I was like 90 10 on it actually accumulating like I figured there's a chance it might snow I didn't think there was any chance at all it would get like this but and here we are so first snowfall of the year so naturally I have to go somewhere you know I have to, I have to enjoy the, the cleanness, the pristine look, while I can. I was going to go to the further trail, but after that last hike I took, and the rain and stuff, uh, I actually got a blister on the tip of my toe, right? So it's super weird, and super uncomfortable. And I also learned that neither of my pairs of boots are actually waterproof. Now I guess uh, this set has a hole in it somewhere too. So, something to keep in mind. Looks like uh, if and when this job ever happens, a really, really crazily good pair of walking boots is on the horizon. Uh, not a lot to talk about as far as job and stuff's concerned. Uh, she called me. I called like the big shots at HR. And they told me that it's basically a waiting game that somebody's dragging their feet somewhere or something's not coming through somewhere and there's nothing I can do. So, you know, it's, you know, it is what it is, you know. The, uh, the, the money missing from my card. Uh, so I called them on Monday, was dealing with that. Apparently, no, okay, get this, get this, right? I called my caseworker and I'm like, why'd you guys take all that money like right before the holidays with no warning like that's super uncool she's like we don't take money so i was like well you know like 400 bucks is like gone so she said there's such a high rate of people that sell them you know for drug fixes or whatever they sell them for that i can't do anything without proof but she's like she'll get a list of transactions from her supervisor, right? So, 20-odd minutes passed. They were pretty punctual about it. They called me back. And they're like, we pulled up your... We pulled up your recent transactions. There's nothing suspicious there. Uh, just a... Just a bunch of, you know, purchases at Walmart. I'm like, okay. So, I called Walmart and asked if they had any uh, documentation to see if I double charged my card or something, which, in reality, I'd had to quadruple or quintuply charge my card to, because uh, I spent like a hundred bucks. You know, I didn't spend four hundred, five hundred dollars. I spent a hundred. So, <coughs> I would have had to the machine would have had to malfunction to charge me like four times or five times to make it the way it was. But I figured I don't know what else to do, so I might as well give them a call, right? So, no real headway there. So I was like, okay, I'm going to look up the recent transactions myself because uh, you can do that online. And here comes the train. Awesome. 
uh, you can look up the transactions yourself online. And there was four transactions within five minutes for roughly a hundred dollars each in Texas. And my caseworker and my caseworker supervisor said there was nothing suspicious. So I called my caseworker back and I asked for her supervisor's number directly. And I called the supervisor directly and I left a message. I'm like, listen, I called you, I called Wally World, I looked up the uh, I looked up the transaction list myself, and there's four purchases for hundred dollars a piece in a span of roughly five minutes apart, or five minutes total. Like they some of them were less than a minute apart in Texas. And you you don't like you don't think that's suspicious? So Eventually she called me back and I had to go uh, claim fraud. The cops might get involved. Like it's a, a, a huge mess. And part of me is like, sorry, I gotta warm up my other hand. But uh, part of me is like, it's whatever, you know? I got, I got help from that. I got help from that program for quite a while. And I'm not one to be greedy. So, it's whatever. But to find out, one of two things. Somebody out there is so greedy that they're robbing welfare people. Or somebody out there is so poor they're robbing welfare people. And both things don't sit right with me. Like, in my time doing... uh in my time doing retail, I know there are so many people out there that drive like brand new cars, have, you know, their money jiggle jiggles don't folds kind of stuff going on. And yet they get like five, six hundred dollars with the grub stubs a month. And like, I'm highly opposed to that because they obviously don't need it. And you got people like me that is doing a job that pays nothing, has no income, no car, you know, has, has like nothing going for them, and somebody steals from them? Like, like, like what is up with this world? I guess, I guess whenever you're a scumbag, you take whatever you can get. It's not a dirt bike, maybe? It's not a matter of opportunistic predators four-wheeler maybe not opportunistic predators they if they get the information and they see there's money to take they do it is, is how I see it I guess I guess what I should be thankful for is they left like 20 bucks on the card <laughs> I guess that uh I guess that was uh, too small you know they couldn't find something real quick for twenty dollars to charge to the card. I don't know. Uh, now that's a whole mess, and that's something. You know, I'm waiting for the job, trying to better my life, and things are just, you know, like I said, like I said, I can't wait till it's over. Cause the minute something, as soon as it gets closer to departure, the minute I feel anything slipping backwards. I'm headed for the hills, man. Like, it might be hard. It might not be a smart decision. But I'm so sick of having my life ruined by whatever's ruining it. I don't know what's causing it. I don't know how to fight back. Best I can do is leave and do the best I can with what I got. Well, I still have my health. Or what's what health I have. You know just so irritating you can rob somebody that has you know a six-figure bank account three houses and three cars or you can rob somebody that's on welfare I like, screw this place man these people are sick <coughs> right. now Honestly, not much really surprises me. 
Uh, what else is there? Is there anything else worth talking about? That actually took a bit longer than I thought it was going to. Let's talk about... Let I want to talk about something. I have a story, and I may have mentioned it before. I may have mentioned it before, but I have a story, right? So I don't know if I ever actually told you guys why I actually started smoking. So, throughout most of my life, I was sheltered from the good and the bad. Well, except for, for my dad and my brother, but I was pretty much forced to basically live under a rock. So I didn't really have any freedom till I was like 19. Well, basically, because I graduated when I was 19. I didn't flunk, I started kindergarten early and the birthdays were weird. But that's a different story. I started, uh, somewhere after I, I broke up with the ex that I started talking to again recently, the one that I've recently been talking about, sometime after I broke up with her, or she broke up with me, or mutual split, I don't know exactly, it, it, like I said, it, it ended on semi-good terms, so that, that part, that's a story from another time as well, but, uh, you know, my mom, she, uh, that's where I was at the time. She went and uh, got this boyfriend, right? A new boyfriend. She had a different boyfriend when I was there. Like I said, she has five kids, four dads. You know, and many partners between. So, so sometimes it's hard to keep track. Uh, she, she was getting together with her friend's ex-husband, right? Well, he started having seizures, and she blamed the type of cigar he was smoking. So when he was having a seizure, she stole his cigars and told me to hide them. So I did. They sat in my dresser for, I don't know, maybe a month. And I was like, screw it. I wonder what they're like. So I lit one up, right? And... It was nothing really to brag about. I mean, there was no revolutionary mind pop there where I was like, wow, this is the greatest thing ever, or wow, this sucks. You know, it was just, okay, people do this. I can, it's a thing. But then I was like, okay, what about cigarettes? So, after smoking about two packs of the cigars, there was a whole carton, about nine packs, I think, eight packs maybe. I smoked about two packs of them. And I was like, all right, I don't see the appeal. But I was like, I wonder what cigarettes are like. And that's when it popped. Because I was like, wow. I was like, okay. These are almost kind of good. These are almost, like, it made me feel, well, if you don't smoke, you don't really understand it. But, like, when I quit smoking and I start again, after like three days, that first cigarette gives you like this head rush. It's fast and fleeting. It's nothing, you know, it's not deer. It's not like another deer. <laughs> but, uh, I can't really relate it to any actual, you know, drug. But it gives you like a, a small head rush, a little euphoria, a slight euphoria. It's kind of like giving your body something that it missed. What are you looking at? Coming down here? You want a piece of this? I will eat you raw. <laughs> uh, so, that's how it kind of happened. And when I first started, it was nothing for me to buy two packs and I'd smoke like maybe five a day, you know, nothing crazy, and then quit for a couple of weeks. Like, it was nothing for me to do that. But somewhere along the lines, it kind of got away from me. Somewhere along the lines, I just started smoking all the time. I think it was somewhere along the lines of me drinking a lot more. <laughs> <coughs> oh, excuse me. But, uh, eventually, eventually it kind of got 
you know, to the point where, okay, okay, now I'm a, I'm a smoker now, you know, that, that happened somewhere along the line. And then, uh, I'll tell you another cool story that I may or may not have mentioned. So, I became a smoker, right? So, I've always been a fisherman. I've been a fisherman for a, as much as possible growing up, right? And we went to this really good spot where landing fish was nothing. They weren't always big fish, but landing fish, you couldn't go there and not catch a fish. Like, okay? So, I got a massive bite, right? And I went to grab my rod, and I'm weird, right? I, I roll... I reel upside down. I don't reel like normal people. I don't flip the rod over and reel. I reel upside down. So I hold my hand like this, and I reach for the rod. The ember of the cigarette burnt my line, and I lost the fish. So when that happened, I decided to try chewing, right? Because uh, the guy I was hanging out with at the time, he chewed all the time. And I was like, I don't know. I hate the idea of having something in my mouth all the time. I hate the idea of the graininess. I hate the idea of having to spit, like, everything about it's kind of gross. But I was like, okay, I'm going to start chewing while I fish. Now that was something I started doing, right? And I never, I never considered myself a chewer, because, like, I would only chew when I fished. And it didn't last long like there were the off times that I would get like vendor coupons for like the snus pouches or something uh, from uh, the guy that supplied the store because he was a I don't know either a nice guy or really trying to push his product one of the two and I would I would chew on occasion but that was something that I could take it or leave it at any time smoking became kind of a reflex now, when I quit this time, I gained like almost 20 pounds, and I'm not okay with that. Like, my diet isn't that bad. My exercise isn't that bad. I'm not going to just start gaining weight, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not okay. So I started again, obviously. Now... Here's, the, here's where this all ties in, right? My current goal set was the permit, license, job, cell phone. <coughs> well, permit, cell phone, license, job. Then a car. Then I wanted to start my uh, ketose diet, the glycemic index diet again. And then I was going to quit smoking again. And in theory, in theory, if I'm doing the glycemic index, I will not gain weight. Or the ketose diet, whatever you call it, right? In theory, I wouldn't gain weight because there wouldn't be anything to gain except muscle mass. So, but now that uh, I had this here card hack and $400 is down the drain... That goal is a lot harder because eating healthy, for the most part, eating healthy and sticking to it because you can buy a variety of foods, is expensive. I mean, if you eat nothing but rice, oatmeal, and chicken, it's not horrible to stay to keep, you know, money-wise. It's not like, it's not completely, it's not completely insane, uh, cost-wise. But if you want to eat like a variety, like you want like, I don't know, chicken, salmon, maybe on occasion a steak, uh, then you got to like, that's a lot more money. Or if you don't want to eat always, you don't always want to eat rice and you want to eat fresh vegetables, that's more trips to the store. And it's, you know, it's, it's a little more costly. Uh, as you can see, I live in an area where we get all four seasons. So I don't have an indoor garden. So... You know, I can supplement it in the summertime, but when winter hits, there's not much I can really do.
But that's where that's where this all ties in. Ah. Now we're almost got about ten minutes till we're out of here, maybe five. Uh, there's not really anything else I really got to say. I want to say. Uh, good old Granny is trying to trying to start a conversation with me today. It was nonsense mostly. It was asking me about what kind of bun I was using for my sandwich. I didn't say anything. Like I didn't even didn't even acknowledge her presence. I was. I'm to the point. There's one thing she said growing up. If you ain't got something nice to say, don't say anything at all. And I tell you right now, man, I ain't got much nice to say. So, I just don't. There's things that should be said. There's things that I want to say. But like I said, this, uh, this racket she's been doing since... She's been pulling the same racket for as long as I've been alive. She's been pulling the same racket for as long as my dad's been alive. It's not going to change. It, it, it ain't going to matter what I say. It ain't going to matter what I do. I, it, it's, it's not going to change. So, <coughs> I, I just don't feel it necessary to waste my breath. I've been, I've been to the point of can't waiting, can't wait till this is over, since I've been back here, and now that I'm finally at the home stretch, so to speak, I finally have the, I'm finally close enough to the breaking point where hiking away with a backpack is better than this garbage that I'm dealing with. Well, I can't, I said in a previous video, right? Right now, I'm trading my life and freedom for a roof over my head, basically. And the other side of the coin is, I'm trading a roof over my head and that, that safety for my life and freedom. And it's just, either way you look at it, it it's a bad deal. So, so just, uh, as far as I'm concerned, when the time comes, it's going to be like ripping off a band-aid, you know? Just going to go, going to go, you know? I, I can't justify, I can't justify wasting any more of my life doing whatever it is that I'm doing. I, there's no future. There's nothing to gain, everything to lose. I'm getting older. I'm getting more out of shape. I'm getting bitter and angry at the world, more bitter and angry at the world. And it shows when I talk to new people. And it's not fair. It, it's not fair for me to be this kind of person. It's not fair for me to project that onto everyone just because I'm being targeted for whatever reason. So, it's like ripping off a band-aid. <coughs> Alright, uh, I think I'm going to go. It's probably like 20 minutes, 25 minutes. I ain't got much else to really say. So, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for hearing me out. And, uh, hope you're looking forward to more videos because the weather stays this nice, well, I'll be out a lot more.